All right, and we're back. So, just like we said, we got a lot to get into, but before we get into that, just uh, reintroduce ourselves. Ben Abrams, podcast editor. To my, to my right, Rashad Milligan, sports editor. And to my left, Michael Gaither, marketing manager. All right, so uh, before we get into Zach Kennedy, uh, Rashad, I think there's something you said you'd like to say? Uh, yes, today I have an apology to make. Um, I was watching the Blue Beachers podcast, you know, because I, I watch, I support my own stuff. This weekend, uh, I saw, I, was, I wasn't I was putting respect on someone's name. The Georgia State women's basketball team. I, I said they had no chance at being any type of good coming together as a team this year. So it's over for 2017, 2018, and probably 2019. Um, I earlier this week, UL Moreau, a team that beat Georgia State in women's basketball earlier this season lost to Georgia State by 52 points. I apologize, Georgia State women's basketball team, because y'all deserve some respect on your name. So for that, I'm going to throw respect on your name from now on. It doesn't matter what happens once this episode is published because there'll be a couple games played. There's a game going on right now as we're recording against UL. I don't know what the heck is going to happen in that game, what's going to happen for the rest of the season. But just for that 52 point win, I apologize. Do you have to take back your apology if they get blown up, blown up by 52 points? Yes. Well, it, no, no, if they lose by 60. If they lose by 60? If they yeah, lose even by 60. At, at the point I'm just coming out, possible. they were one last, worst case scenario, they win la- three out of the last four by the time this does come out. Right. <laughs> what do you lose? Though? Right, I mean, but if they lose bad today, it's like, okay, <laughs> oh, okay. this is a team we've been seeing all year. Okay, so then, and then when we come back, <laughs> uh, then when we're back here in the next. Oh, not next week, but we call him that. You're going to be talking about, I told y'all. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, they won by 52 points. You can't yeah. do like, you, you never, I don't think the, the nine win Philadelphia 76ers won by 52 points in those nine games. Very sure. So there you go. There you have it. All right. All right. So uh, Rashad, being big enough to apologize, being a man about it. <clears throat> so uh, now let's uh, move on to, uh, well, let's keep the positivity going. So uh, we're going to Zach Kennedy. Yeah. So uh, Rashad, I know uh, you had a chance to uh, sit down and uh, just spend some time with uh, with Zach. You know, for those who don't know the story, and you can read it in um, this week's edition of the Signal, which is on newsstands right now. A couple of weeks ago, as of now, a couple of weeks ago. All right, a couple of weeks yeah, ago, right now. Right. All right. Well, it's still up. Right. right. But anyway. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so uh, Zach is a uh, transfer from Clemson who. Uh, Came here to Georgia State, had a, uh, as you said, had a great year. Um, led led the team to uh, number one seed in the Sun Belt Tournament, and has been doing all this year. In fact, he's the number one guy. He has a 96 record, and really seems to be looking to prove a lot of folks wrong uh, at his last home, at his last school. So, yeah, man, the, the Zach Kennedy interview. You know, Zach is like my dude. I've had a couple of interviews with him in the past. Last year, I did the Valentine's issue with them. Valentine's issue out now at the Signal, uh, but. You know, you know Zach. He's just a cool dude. You know, I, I interviewed him also with Primetime Sports at GSCB, and um, he brought up like Brain Core Fresh, like the weekend after he passed, and I thought that was so cool from like a tennis dude because the whole tennis team at Georgia State is majority like European guys, majority international guys, and not only is Zach Kennedy American, but he's from Atlanta, so I think that's really cool that he's from Atlanta, and um, we we talked about a lot, man, like. He's a he's a black kid from from the southwest Atlanta that plays tennis and he's really good at it. He's darn good at it. He's the best player on the team and a team full of international guys. And to see him grind and and you know you know be like this is who I am and be proud of it and work hard towards it and to he loved it himself because it was hard for him growing up to really accept what he was. You know I, I just thought that was a really cool story. So uh, I that so. He did mention about, you know, being a black kid who plays tennis, especially in Southwest Atlanta, and especially where, you know, you have a lot of black athletes, they, you know, tend to gravitate towards, you know, football, basketball, track and field, um, so I may go to baseball, wrestling. So, um, but also trying to, you know, be kind of a misfit, especially growing up. So, I guess if you take anything away from him about, you know, just being able to overcome that kind of adversity? Well, when I asked him about that, he, he just said that, he didn't think, he didn't see it, he didn't struggle with it at all. Like, well, as like, you know, just growing up usually, except for in high school, he said he felt like he's, 
you know, felt out of place a little bit. But for the most part, since he had good parents, he said they really just, he could always come to them and talk to them about, you know, being a tennis player. And, you know, when he wanted to quit tennis and just be like everybody else and play basketball, you know, they were like, no, this is not happening. You know, <laughs> his dad was like, I'm not letting you do that. And I don't know, it's just, it's very inspiring, man. It's a very inspiring story to me. I tried to drop a tear, even though he went to that other school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, Mike went to uh, Langston. Man, he went to Westlake. Yeah, he went to Westlake. I, I, I was going to say the name for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get school. Let's get school. You know, just that, 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 that other school over there. But, I mean, it is a really, you know, a really good story, especially for somebody coming from my same neighborhood. Um, if you went to Westlake, that means he probably lived, like, maybe like a mile or two away from me. So, just to see somebody from my neighborhood come up and, you know, go through what he did. It's very inspiring, like you said. And, and he had people with him, too, on the ride up. Chris Eubanks from Georgia Tech, his, his partner at ATP, and in the professional ranks when they're uh, playing in doubles play. I mean, I think it's pretty cool. You know, he's got someone just like him. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, just last question. So you've uh, had a chance to interview a lot of, uh, a lot of Panthers here, you know, as your time, uh, you know, as a writer, as a sports editor and everything. So <clears throat> I want to say, where do you think this interview – um, I guess right. So, does it have any lasting impact? Um, I've had I've had a lot of good interviews with just like everybody just outside of Georgia State. But as far as people inside Georgia State, I think this or at Georgia State Athletics, I should say, um, I think this was this was probably my favorite interview, just ever. Like that. That's why I loved the fact that it was a Q and A, and I was like, it's cool. Like I had a really good Q and A with uh, Mike Holmes too, a year ago. But this was this was really good, just because we went into that race thing, you know, and I think I don't know those things beyond the court, beyond the game, is is what interests me as a journalist. All right, so uh, oh, actually a lot of good stuff today.